everywhere you look, you will find it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about something that has changed our life. I'm talking about something that has changed the way we live, the way we work, and everything around us. That's right. I'm talking about plastic. If you're unsure, plastic has actually changed our life because it has assisted with so many things in the medical field, at home, just about everything you can think of. There's plastic. So everywhere you look right now, even the phone you're holding, the laptop has plastic inside of it. The benefits about plastic is that it is cheap, it's durable, and it can be molded into absolutely anything, right? But then we have come to a stage of a disadvantage because we, what do we do with the plastic that's being thrown around? Most people recycle it, but the rest that doesn't get recycled just gets dumped into landfill. And that is why the plastic free movement has been huge at the moment. And that is exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be helping you out how you are able to move into a plastic free lifestyle. So what I'm going to cover today, I'm going to cover what is plastic. Then I'm going to go into why is plastic bad for us environmentally and health wise? And then I'm going to wrap it up and give you 20. That's right. I'm going to give you 20 tips how you are able to live a plastic free lifestyle starting right now. Let's get into it. It's Mondays with Mahela. That's right, me. Thank you so much for tuning in. I absolutely love, love, love and appreciate your support. For any of you who don't know me, like I said, my name is Mahela. I'm a qualified naturopath and absolutely passionate about all things health, business and overall success. And today's segment on Mondays, I'm here to provide you health hacks to optimize your health. And these are simple, sustainable and savvy health hacks. So, the segment is on the Natural Health Podcast, which is available on iTunes, Spotify, and also here. This is it. This is the Natural Health Podcast on YouTube that you're listening to right now. All right, let's get into it. Today's topic is such an interesting one because plastic is all around us. And I'm sure that you have heard about the plastic free movement because it is beneficial. Not only is it beneficial for the environment, but it's also beneficial for your health. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So I thought, what what best way to start off then? Let's talk about what is plastic? We see it everywhere, but what is plastic? Okay, so let's get back into the history of plastic. So plastic is actually a word that originally meant pliable and easily shaped. That's where the word came from, right? So one of the earliest examples was invented by Alexander Parks, and that was back in like the 1855, right? So he, what he did is he named the invention Park Sign, and his invention is what we know today as celluloid, right? So the first man-made plastic was created by him, and he publicly demonstrated this in, not, in 1862 at a great international exhibition in London, right? So what the big thing was is he took this... Um, an organic matter derived from cellulose, which is plants, that once heated could be molded into shapes once it's cooled down. So, so it could be molded into anything when it's hot and then when it cools down, it stays in that shape. And that was absolutely huge back in 18, 1862. That was absolutely huge. And then what happened, there was a breakthrough because people were like, wow, like, you know, not that I was back there, but you know, I can imagine being like, this is absolutely amazing. We need to add on to it like us humans do, we'd add on to things. So back then, um, in 1907, when Belgian American chemist Leo created Bakelite, and that was the real, the first real synthetic mass produced plastic. And he's actually the one that coined the name plastic. And that was in 18, so 1907. So now what is plastic, right? We know plastic, um, plastic has taken the term of recently became a name for a category of materials called polymers. The word poly means of many parts and polymers are made of long chains of molecules. Polymers are found around in nature. So cellulose, the material that makes up the cell walls of plants, is a very common natural polymer. So you can see why back in the days they used cellulose, right? But now it's turned into more of a synthetic type, right? So over the last century, uh, what humans have learned is to make synthetic polymers. So sometimes using natural substances like cellulose, which they did back in 1907, but more often using 
carbon atoms provided by petroleum and other fossil fuels. And that is where the issue lays, right, lies. So blended into most plastics are also additional organic or inorganic compounds. The average content of additives is only a few percent, right? Many of the controversies associated with plastic actually are related to the additives, which are found to be very toxic. So it's not to do with the plastic itself. It's got to do with the small percentage of toxic additives that are added to it, right? So what are the typical additives? The typical additives that you probably would have heard of is something like BPA. You would have heard of BPA-free things lately. Um, another thing is also coolant, coolants, uh, plasticides, fillers, and stabilizers. These are the things that are added into plastic, right, to make it the way it is to make it more uh, flexible, to make it um, a certain shape and so forth, right? So for, um, so pure plastics have a low toxic due to their insolubility in water and because they are biochemically in, inert due to a large molecule weight. Plastic producers contain a variety of additives, some which can be toxic. And these are the additives that we're talking about. These are plasticizers like um, adipates and phytates are often added to brittle plastics, right? To make them pliable enough to use in food packaging, toys, and many other items. So traces of these compounds can leach out of the products. That is the issue. It can leach out of the product. Um, owning to concerns over the effect of such leashes, leashes, right? So the European Union has restricted the use of DEHP and other flytates in some applications and other United States has limited the use of um, such as DEHP, DP, so forth, all these other additives, right? In children toys and childcare, right? So it can be used somewhere else, but thankfully they've excluded it out of children toys, right? So they found that these compounds leaching from these food containers, these plastic containers, have been proposed to interfere with hormone functions that are suspected to be human carcinogenics. And other chemicals of potential concern include um, other, other things I'm going to be talking about later in the podcast, right? So there's a huge issue there. So we can see the history of plastic. It has evolved from being from plants and now being uh, more being like synthetically made, right? With petroleum and fossil fuels and then added all these toxins, these additives into it, which makes it toxic, right? So plastic itself is probably not as toxic, but the additives are what makes it toxic. And I'm gonna go into later what it can do to us humans. So, uh, so plastic, plastic was this big thing in the um, early 19th century. It was absolutely huge, used for so many beneficial things, right? But what's happened is the reputation fell further in the 1970s and the 80s because there was a lot of anxiety about the waste uh, because plastic became a special target because while so many plastics products are disposable, plastic lasts forever in the environment. And that is what I want you to get into your head. Plastics last forever in our environment. It was the plastic industry that offered recycling as a solution. In the 1980s, the plastic industry led an influential drive, encouraging multiple individuals to use waste management, to use recycling, to be a part of it. So it was actually their solution. The individuals that made the plastic, they came up with a solution and being like, hey, let's, let, let's recycle things so we can still continue making more plastic, right? How does that make any sense? But okay, at least it came up with a solution my hat off for that. So recycling is far, far from perfect, right? And most plastics still end up in landfills or in the environment, and unfortunately, in our seas, our poor animals, right? The portion of plastic depends on the chemical composition of the subunits and arrangements. So, so what they're saying is that plastic, um, there could be different, different types of plastics. It just depends on what material it is made out of, right? Um, so, but what, how can you know what's plastic? So most of the characteristics that plastics have in common is they're usually solid. Um, they are usually poor conductors of heat and electricity. And this was why also it was such a beneficial and such a big thing back in the early 19th century. Um, they, they, they tend to be stiff. Um, and then but thin sheets can be moved around and used as films, which they actually use to make films. Um, interesting. Nearly all plastics display elongated when they are stressed. That is not 
re recovered after the stress is removed um so it kind of um has like a creep in it that's what they're kind of trying to say plastics also are durable which is beneficial but not so beneficial at the same time so what are examples of plastics right so uh, examples of there's so many different chemicals that make up plastics different types so your glad wrap is totally different to your toys totally different to your appliances and so forth right but some of them are called um Oh, I can't even probably pronounce this, but polyphenolterephytates, P-E-T or P-E-T-E, -E, high density polyphenols, <laughs> H-D-P-E, and polyvinyl chloride, P-V-C, polyporylene, P-P, <laughs> polystyrene, P-S, low density polyphenolene, L. DPE. This is just some. This is just some. There's so many more. There's so many more different chemicals that make up plastics, right? So now that you know a little bit of the history about plastics, where plastics came from, how they're being used, and actually that they last forever. That was the biggest thing that I want you to come out of this, that they actually last forever. And recycling, yes, it may be um, a solution, but it is not a perfect solution. Recycling is not a perfect solution. So until we come to a perfect solution, there may be one at the end of this podcast for you to contribute, not just rely on the government to contribute and someone else to do something. You can do something. All right. So like I said, what I'm going to be talking about now is how plastic contributes to our health, to our environment and so forth, right? So like I said to you, plastics, the reputation has suffered thanks to a growing concern about potential threats they pose to human health. These concerns focus on the additives. So the additives that we spoke about earlier that are toxic. So one of them being BPA, right? You would have heard of it, right? And they go, they go into plastic during the manufacturing process, making them more flexible, durable, and transparent. Some scientists and members of the public are concerned about the evidence that these chemicals leach out of the plastic and into our food, water, and into our bodies. In very high doses, these chemicals can disrupt the endocrine, our hormone system. Researchers worry particularly about the effects of these chemicals on our children and what continued accumulation does for a future generation. So not just instant exposure, it's the ongoing exposure. What will that do for future generations? So I wanted to have a look into environmental, right? So just a little bit, what happened to the environment? How does it impact it, right? Between 1950 to 2015, a total of 6.3 billion tons of primary and secondary plastic waste was generated, of which around 9% had been recycled and 12% incinerated, and then the remaining 79% either being stored in landfills or having been released directly into a natural environment. That is a lot of plastic being released into our environment. So, geographically, the five heaviest plastic polluters are, you ready? China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Sri Lanka. So, which, which they, between them, contribute 56% of global plastic waste. I don't know if you've ever been to any of those countries. I know I have, and they use a lot of plastic. Their food is wrapped in plastic. Their drinks are in plastic. Um, everything is in plastic. There's plastic absolutely everywhere. It's and it's just it just ends up on the streets and they just use it. So imagine imagine what that, that's doing to their body and and they're probably unaware of it because it's plastic is cheap. It's so cheap. So unfortunately, some of those countries aren't that well off and that's what they have to do. It's so sad. It's so sad. What I thought I would do is I thought, you know what, I'm going to go into a few of the additives that are added into plastic. Not all of them, because the, this podcast could go forever if I went into all of them. I thought I'd just choose a few and, and talk about the health effects it has on our body. The first one I wanted to start off with is the BPA, which we all know about, right? So the plastic monomer and plasticizer, bisphenol A, which is BPA, is one of the highest volume chemical produced worldwide. BPA is used in the production of polycarbonate plastics and epoxy raisin used in many consumer products. BPA is metabolized in the liver to form bisphenol A glu gluconoid. <laughs> 
bigger. And mostly in this form, it's excreted with our urine. That's how we remove it. Due to the structure, it has been shown to interfere with estrogen receptors and act as antagonists or um, agonists via estrogen receptors, dependent signaling pathways. Did you just hear what I just said? This BPA messes with our hormones. So therefore, BPA has been shown to play a role in the pathogenesis of several endocrine disorders, including female and male infertility. Pre Precocious puberty, hormone dependent tumors such as breast and prostate cancers and several metabolic disorders, including polycystic ovaries syndrome. Plastic. Plastic is linked to infertility. That is exactly what this study is saying. That is just absolutely crazy when we think about how much plastic we're taking in every single day and that that is affecting our fertility rate. What is happening around the whole world at the moment? So many individuals are having fertility issues, not just females, not just males, but as a couple, as a combination, people are having fertility issues. People are having prostate, breast cancer, hormone issues, and BPA may be a part of that issue. Not the whole issue, but definitely a part of it. So the next one I wanted to look at, which is the di-2-ethylhexyl phylate, which is DEHT. P, right? It's a widely used plasticizer. It's used in, listen to this, just listen to where it's used, okay? Hospital equipment. Figure that out, right? <laughs> Food wrapping and numerous other commercial and industrial products. Unfortunately, plasticizers can migrate within the material and leach out in over time, ending up in the environment and frequently in the human body. Right. So what it does is it, 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 it migrates at a constant rate from plastic to the environment. It has been detected in water, soil, food, and is therefore considered as a widespread environmental contaminated. It can enter the body through inhalation, ingestion, and dermal contact on a daily basis, which has raised a lot of concern on a potential effects on human health. So we can inhale it, we can touch it, we can eat it, like this is crazy, right? So it has come under increased scrutiny as a breakdown product are believed to be endocrine disruptors, same as the one that I mentioned earlier. Exposure has been shown to have many adverse effects on animals, but also on humans. It is the best known endocrine disruptor. An endocrine disruptor is an exogenous substance or mixture that alters the function of the endocrine system and consequently causes adverse health effects in, in an organ or in, a, in an individual, right? So this is what this plastic additive is doing to us, right? So it can be, um, so, okay, so what happens is this is really interesting, right? So the DEHP can be metabolized in the primary monoster, which is MEHP, right, in our thyroid cells. So that's what happens, right? It gets, it gets changed into it with our thyroid cells. So the study found out that in Chinese school children, exposure to this MEHP was positively associated with BMI and waist circumference, which can relate to obesity. So this is saying that this plastic additive can be linked to obesity, right? Also, first trimester DEHP exposure in pregnant women has a negative impact on the offspring that led to a decrease in AGD, which is angogenital distance, particular in newborn boys, but not in girls, which implies that the exposure of this affects male genital development. It, it's, it's, it's the kids inside of you and it hasn't even touched plastic, but because you have, it can affect it. Like that's crazy, right? The study on Indian women with endometriosis showed significantly higher levels of DEHP exposure compared to women without endometriosis. Another, another study saying to us that it interrupts our endocrine system. Brain derived nootropic factor, which I speak about a lot is like, is absolutely important for our brain health, right? It's a protein that plays a crucial role in the survival of existing neurons and promotes the enhancement of different neurons in the synapse, right? Low dose DEHP exposure, about 10 mg's per kilo, has been shown to affect the dorsal hypothalamus D 
DBNF expression negatively. That is huge. It impacts our brain. It impacts our thyroid. It impacts our metabolic system. It impacts our um, genitals. It impacts our fertility, our reproduction. And this is just one of the additives. Imagine if I went and did a podcast on all of them. Imagine that. Imagine if I sat here, stood here, and I did a podcast on all of the plastic additives, what it does. I just wanted you to get a bit of a understanding of what these plastic additives are due to our body, due to our environment, to our animals, to us, to our future generation. I just wanted to give you a bit of an insight before we go into how you can live a plastic-free life because if you don't have a why to do something, you're not going to change. This, for me, is enough of a why to remove plastic out of my life or try and limit plastic exposure in my life, right? If it's going to affect animals, if it's going to affect the water, the land, my fertility, if it's going to affect my future generation, our future generation, my future kids, if it's going to affect my brain health, you know, my metabolic rate, like if it's going to affect that to me is a good enough reason to try my best and go and, and, and do a plastic free movement. So talking about plastic free movement, how do you do it? What can you do? How can you get on board, right? Let's get into it. This is exciting. I'm going to give you 20 tips to go plastic free, right? I want you to know I'm going through a process the same as maybe you are going through a process. I have not removed all my plastic out of my out of my life. However, I have definitely reduced my exposure. I've reduced the use of plastic. And this is what I have done. And then some of the things that I am going to do, I'm going to share with you right now, right? Since it is clear that plastics has a valuable place in our life, some scientists are attempting to make plastics safer and more sustainable, which are absolutely Rob. Some interventions are developing bioplastics, which are made from plant crops instead of fossil fuels, which is what was done back in the day. So we're going back to what was done a hundred and something years ago to create substances that are more environmentally friendly that conventionally than the conventional plastics, right? They're working to make plastic a truly biodegradable, so it's able to biodegrade and not just be there forever. So whilst recycling is being put into place at the moment, we need to make it more efficient, we need to make it more effective. And I thank these scientists for thinking about these ideas to make a product, to make a product from fossil fuels and move it into more natural so we're able to work with our environment, work with our health, right? So let's get into how you can start being. So, you know, all of these inventors recognize that plastics are perfect, but they are important, are not perfect, but they're an important necessary part of our future. So the question is, is what can you do, you, not anyone else, what can you do right now to make plastic a little bit more sustainable um, in your life? So let's get into it. Let's get into it, right? So the first one is use bags reusable bags where possible and i've done an actual product review on some bags that i do when i go when i go shopping you know you got those plastic bags that you put in your veggies and your fruit no don't use that try and use reusable ones that you always carry with you and put the fruit and veggies in there but also when you are going out try not to buy the plastic bags have reusable bags with you that's number one easy right it's it's kind of our government in australia already helped out with that because they stopped using single use of plastic bags right thank you that's absolutely amazing second one is reusable coffee cups i love coffee i'm pretty sure you love coffee so what can you do use reusable coffee cups third buy from a farm right the reason why i'm saying buy from a farm or a farmer's market is because if you go to the shops you will find vegetables wrapped up in plastic You'll find fruit wrapped up in plastic. What is that about? I don't know, but try and go to the farm to absolutely avoid that. Four, buy a reusable drinking bottle. Have the same drinking bottle, fill it up, use it every day instead of having plastic water bottles. Six is buy in bulk. The reason why buying in bulk is you can buy bigger things, right? So then you're able to move it into a container, which is either made from glass or one that you've recycled yourself and you're able to fill it up instead of always buying the same container. And what are you going to do with that plastic, right? Number seven is, this is such a good one. I absolutely love this. When you go and get takeaway food or you're in a rush or something, there's plastic utensils, right? No, don't touch those plastic utensils or those one-use chopsticks. Bring your own, right? 
carry around like a little packet with your own fork, knife, spoon, chopsticks, whatever you want to call it. Carry that with you and whenever you go, you know you've got you got it in your car, right? It's there with you um, or in your bag and you just reuse that, right? Next one is number eight, glass containers. Use Try and use glass containers where absolutely possible. And what I do is, is whenever I get a glass jar, I actually wash it and reuse it, put my oats in it, put seeds in it, put nuts in it, so I don't have to go buy. You know how everyone's got those amazing pantries and they look absolutely organized and they're with all the same glasses and all this amazing? You don't have to do that. You already just recycle that glass container or instead of using the plastic containers, you use the glass container, right? Next one is straws. Number nine, use stainless steel straws if you want to use straws or just say no to straws whatsoever and just drink it. Use your mouth. That's what it's there for, right? Number 10, use plastic free bin liners. Use compost, compost, biodegradable, biodegradable ones. Absolutely amazing. I use them. It's, it's, it's just an easy, quick thing that you can use, right? Number 11 is use a wooden hairbrush instead of a plastic hairbrush. This is really interesting. It's actually highly beneficial for your hair too because it moves the oils from your hair in a better manner than a plastic one would, right? Really interesting. Number 12, buy plastic-free toilet paper. And an amazing brand who does amazing is Who Gives a Crap. They wrap it up in um, recycled paper, which is absolutely amazing instead of that plastic around it. Um, number 13 is a bamboo toothbrush instead of a plastic toothbrush. There you go. Number 14 is razors with removable blades or even better, an electric shaver. Because can you imagine how many times, especially men or even women would use the shaving and then they just suck it out because you use it a few times and there goes the plastic, right? You don't even think about this. I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh, oh wow, this is such a great idea. Another one is a put no junk mail on your mailbox. Um, that assists with all with, with paper mainly, um, and it assists also with the pla some people use plastics to wrap up the paper and so forth, right? Avoid individually wrapped products. So that goes into bulk buying. So instead of buying individually wrapped things, you buy bulk, you know? So they're not individually wrapped because those wrappers are made from plastic, yeah? Switch to paperless billing, right? This is more on the paper side to assist with it. Um, so yeah, so instead of getting everything sent to you, just get an email to you, which is absolutely amazing. Another one which is interesting, and I know my mom probably would have issues with this, is Glad Wrap. Absolutely loves Glad Wrap. Wraps everything up in Glad Wrap, right? But ditch the Glad Wrap and use B Wax Wraps or even better containers. Um, so you're able to get the most out of that. Live a little bit more plastic free. Number 19, don't throw away all, to all toys because you can either donate them, you can make something out of them, um, donate them to the library, to the child care center so they're able to do something with them. Or even if you do um, have all toys, I don't know, make something out of them. Don't, don't just chuck them away because that's a total waste. Number 20 is for the females out there, for my women, is sanitary pads, right? We use so many of them in our lifetime. So try and use biodegradable ones, cotton biodegradable ones. It's not only good for your hygiene, but they're also good for the environment and you're living a more of a plastic-free life. Even better is even use a menstrual cup for anyone who's interested in that, right? Because that lasts forever. There you have it. 20 reasons, 20 tips on how to go plastic free, right? Absolutely amazing. First, I went through and I spoke to you. I explained what is plastic, the history of plastic, what plastic does to our health. And then I wrapped it up with giving you 20 tips how you can able to go into a plastic free movement. You don't have to go 100%. Even if you do a little bit, you are helping your health. You're helping the environment. It's, it's a win-win situation, right? So the government cannot accomplish this task on their own and will need help initiative from the public. Resolving this long-standing problem will require time, money, and energy from individuals now living and those of our future generations to live a so if a safer and cleaner environment is to be achieved, we all need to be involved on a individual level. So you can be involved, I can be involved, and we can assist our health and our environment. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Absolutely love and appreciate you. Do what you do best. Share this podcast with someone that you believe this will blow their mind and they'll be able to make a movement 
How about we start a movement? Let's start a movement. Share this podcast with someone that you think will love this and let's share and start a plastic free movement to help you to help our environment. Do what you do best. Love, like, share, rate, review. Until next Monday, love you.